Learn your track. That is what we're going to talk about in our Race to Learn series today. I'm Larry from Snow Racing and I have Andy Maxwell and Charles Killiman with me and we will take you through some tips and tricks on improving your times on new tracks. The approach we're going to take is to stop at every corner and every turn. So turn one is a tricky corner. It's a downhill right-hander that slopes away from you and it's got a blind apex. And when you overspeed, if you go too quickly through the turn, you end up on the, in the gravel trap on the outside on the exit. Charles gave me quite a good few pointers on this. Let's go have a look at those. Okay, Charles, um, coming up to turn one, which I find quite tricky. Uh, let's have a look at the turn and see how we can how, how you would approach it when you if you didn't know the track. Okay, so coming to turn one, as you can see from where you are now, it's a little bit of a blind apex downhill. Um, remember that uh, from previous conversations, you're looking into the apex as you're approaching it. But then, as soon as you approach the apex, then you're looking kind of much further up the track. Um, you're learning the track from scratch, it's obviously better to go through slow and kind of look at what corners are coming up after each turn, or, you know, whether it's a straight or another turn. So as you come around here, you could see straight away that, you know, there's quite a... Uh, yeah. uh, you could see there's quite a, a long road of, ahead of you. So the approach to this corner is really important. One, you can't see the apex. Uh, when you're coming at speed, you've got to anticipate it. You've got to turn in early. Um, if you go a little bit further, you will see on the left-hand side is a green runoff piece of track. Now, you'll be wanting to, rather than hug the right, you'll be wanting to go a little bit straight here to keep the momentum, which um, some of the really fast guys will put kind of two tires right over onto the green here, and you don't get an off track. Uh, so you, you can you know, really abuse that, that uh, green section there. Uh, and then we're going into an uphill. Um, and again, you can't see you can't see the turn until kind of you get to the the, the, the bridge in front of you there. Sorry, it's still yeah. So, in summary, for turn one, um, it's a downhill turn. Be careful on the brakes. Earlier turning than usual. Yeah. We're gonna light apex. Is that what you said, Charles? So you want to get in. You want to turn in early. Um, because when you hit the apex on that uh, uh, T1, okay. you're lining the car up straight to be heading to where you are now. So if you go late apex, you might be further out over to the right. Yeah. And bearing in mind, you've got to think about the next corner and the next corner. So the corner after this is another right-hander. So you want to be over um, on the left-hand side as you approach that anyway. So you're here from getting into the previous turn early. Yeah. Uh, coming off quite straight, carrying your speed. You know, if you are going quick enough, you will get your green. Um, you will get your tyres onto the green um, yeah. action here. So there was a, quite a lot of information that Charles gave me in that just in that one conversation. What I took away from it was that for turn one, because it's downhill, I need to brake. I can't brake as hard as I usually would because of the because the, the front tires will have less grip and I'll probably lock them up on the steer and struggle with turning. I'm also turning a little bit earlier for similar reasons, but also it's to set up the, the car for the for the next turn. We want to be on the left-hand side because the next upcoming turn is a right-hander. Turn two is a very interesting corner for me because I learned from Charles that there's multiple lines you can take through it and it depends on your situation. If you're hot lapping, you can do a late apex to get good acceleration out of the corner. If you're in a race situation, you'll probably hug the corner a little bit more to avoid people sticking their nose in on the inside. Then you approach this bridge. Again, you can't see the turn till it's late. Um, and then I would, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I would take a late apex here. But you've got to be careful in a race because people will try and dive up your inside if you're not careful. So it's good to learn more than one line. Okay. For different scenarios. But but I, I you know if I was hot lapping I would attempt to do a late late apex here if I could. So if you uh, don't want to get disqualified, but if you talk about late apex, um, in this scenario 
we're going to turn in later, right? So we'll probably turn Correct, it from yeah. here, okay? Yeah. And because you're turning in later, if you keep the same breaking point, you'll be a lot slower, turn in sharper and yeah. accelerate earlier, right? That's right. So you'll be, get, be able to get on the throttle a lot earlier. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you you you. Whatever you think you may lose on a turning late, you'll gain because obviously you'll be greater sooner and got that speed. Okay. Bearing in mind that you, you're coming into another left-hander pretty much straight away, so it's not as important to be hitting a, a late apex. Soon after turn two, we come up to turn three. In this section, Charles talks about using the full width of the track to your advantage. I then tend to break at the 50 where you are now. Yeah. Um, and keep it as uh, straight as I can. Um, and you can go slightly over the white line. I think there's a bit of a grid. Uh, How much difference right. would that make here in this turn? Well, you're making the track as wide as possible, but you're giving yourself a much more turning angle to get in. So you want to get your tires over the, the, the left hand side there, mm -hmm. which will track you out to this grid over here on the right. Yeah. Um, and again, as long as you exit that grid area early enough, you don't get a 1x, but you do carry a lot of speed. Yeah. If you try and avoid that um, area completely, there's a chance that you might um, in the car. So yeah, let it track out, but uh, once it's straight, get it back out to the, onto the tarmac as, quick, um, and as smoothly as you can. I really struggled with this turn uh, that's coming up now. I used to t uh, turn in quite early on it when I, when I just started the track because that's what I thought was the racing line. Charles explained it to me that the later apex is way better and that the exit is more important because it's straight behind it so we get maximum acceleration out of the turn. And he explains it very well. Again, I use the 50, 50, meet, uh, the 50 boards as my braking points. However, on this one, mm -hmm. it's a lot later. So I'm braking much closer to uh, the red and white strip over here on the right. Okay. Um, and I'm keeping the car out to the right and as straight as I can for as long as I can. Uh, so if you go forward a little bit. Why, why do you do that? Why, why do you keep it straight on the outside? Right, so first of all, braking in a straight line, okay. you get... Uh, more the most efficiency out your tires yeah and um, then um, I'm looking for a late apex you're a little bit wide here but I'm looking for late apex onto that left hander where, you, where you're approaching now <clears throat> I'm apex around here and again you're turning the car into the left but you're also because of the speed it's trying to force you out to the right and you have got a bit of you know enough track to run you out to the right so you know don't try and hog that left hand this left hand turn you can let it track out to the right because that's going to carry the most speed okay and it's about using as much track as you can where feasible so the the reason we like apex here is because it's uphill and it's a bit of a straight behind it right so we want as that's much that's correct so you've got a long straight here so you want the best exit that you can get out of that turn so on that previous turn i'm not sorry i'm not in it now but so one of the issues I've got is I don't know when it's safe to accelerate and it's experimentation for me, so I try different things, okay? But with a late apex, you can typically, what I found is, accelerate a lot earlier, even before you hit the apex, you can be full throttle yeah. by then. Correct, yeah. And that's why you get the most acceleration out of the, on the exit of the turn, right? That's but correct. It, and if, but if you do it earlier, you can stay with the throttle longer and the car's still rotating, and you're going to battle with the grip and the rear tires. You can't. You can't go full acceleration yeah. early enough. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would. I would tend to go for when it when it's coming to a long straight. I would tend to go for a, a late apex. So that's going to give me the best benefit, the most benefit from that late apex getting on the throttle, uh, on, and on you know, um, throttling through the apex. Um, so yeah, I, I would always aim to do that. But like I say, it's different dependent on. Situations. If you're not lapping or you're qualif qualifying, yeah. it's going to be very different to to a race scenario where you might be going three wide, going yeah. into that section too wide. Of course, yes. Okay, yeah. so the racing line is not just about the layout of the track. The bumps and the dips in the road also affect how you take a turn. In the next turn, 
Charles explains a little bit about how the, the dip gives us more grip and how when we exit the turn, there's a bump in the road where we, we lose a bit of grip and we can feel it in the force feedback from the wheel. So as we're approaching this right hander, you'll see that there's a bit of a camber where the, the, the road dips into the right and then immediately it goes up hill. So as you're coming up here, you may start find the steering getting a little bit light. But you want to keep the cost as straight as you can to carry as much speed as you can. Mm -hmm. And you'll end up over here on the left hand side uh, uh, by these uh, red and white rumble strips. That's perfectly fine to get both tyres onto there. And that's something you right. taste when you learn the track as well, where the limits are, right? How far you can push. Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. You know, you, you know, you, you, as I said before, you want to use as much of the track as you can. Um, and uh, you, know, you, you can normally tell where the shack limits are. Charles said that we had to use the, the full width of the track to our advantage. He said that a few times now. We've also just heard him talk about track limits and finding the track limits. It's important because in the next turn, we can cut that apex quite a lot before we get an off track. And that helps us a lot with carrying speed through that corner. Again, using the 50 as your braking point. Yeah. Um, you sight obviously on this particular apex, you can see it quite early. So you're aiming, you're aiming to get your right hand tires over this right hand side here, and then the car will track out to the left onto this grid here on the left here. If you stop the car just here, so where you are now to the left of this is a is a gridded area, and when you are going at high speed, you will tend to drift over to there. And again, it's fine. You can get you know, two wheels safely, two left wheels safely over there without any off tracks. Okay. Which will then set you up nicely for the, 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 the this downhill section. As you can see, there's a, a bit of a camber in the road and it dips off the right. Yep. Okay. So, so you want to be over. You want to be over to the left hand side because as you can see. You could, obviously, you could start a straight run, but you could see quite far um, ahead of you and you can see that it's going off again to the right so you want to be over to the left as you approach this. I interrupt again. I just want to point out that what Charles just said. As we look ahead of us we can see a bend in the road, a turn, a corner, but because it's such a slight turn we can treat it like a straight and we can reason about it as if it's a straight and that's important when we work out our racing lines. I started asking Charles some questions about the the racing line and the actual distance around the track and how that influences his decision making on, on when he learns a new track and his advice was solid. Always find the optimum line and learn that irrespective of where the other lines make it easier for yourself because we will and we will remember that racing line and as we get quicker we will get quicker and quicker on the optimum line. I would always go for the optimal line, whatever that might be. Okay. Now, to find the optimal line, it, you know, it's um, you've got to do your research. You've, you know, if it's a particularly if it's a track that you don't know, yeah, you know, you've never driven before, um, it, it's best to do your research and maybe go and watch others. Mm -hmm. There's there's, um, there's resources out there that you can actually go and get your track guides. But I would, from a beginner's point of view, I would always try and um, aim for the optimal line. Okay. Because as you get quicker, you don't then want to change your driving habits in, in terms of approaching, you know, the subsequent corners that are coming up. So always think about the fastest way in and out of a corner. Okay. And okay. that's dependent on what's coming after the turn as well as, you know, what's happened. So, yeah, that, that, that's why I would, would say. That's good advice. Okay. We're now at the final turn on the track and we started to talk about track data, information we can see on the track, uh, racing lines that other cars left behind, where the tire was put down, etc. So Charles explains that we should use that to our advantage and use that as reference information and also information to understand the racing lines better. That 50 board as your braking point, 
and again sighting this turn now i will tend to do a late apex here again okay. one one because i think for me it's safer uh, and two you, you're on to a, this is now a long straight yes long, longish straight yeah so this is going on to the start finish line would you classify this as late apex or even further forward yeah no that's yeah. that's fine where you are because the other option is way way out to the left if you look in front of you where you are now yeah. you see the dark area in the middle of the track yeah that's that's the line a lot of cars will take Correct, yeah. okay, you know so you know again depending on how you set up the previous corner um you know depend on whether you you're over there or, or tighter to the right as to where you are now i find those lines often confusing especially in the skippy because i think that's the that's the gt cars i guess yeah and yeah again i it's it's yeah it, it's what's it's um kind of burnt into the track data isn't it so it's always there yeah um some people use it as as a reference in terms of lines yeah which lines to take yeah. others use um certain marks on the track as as braking references so yeah you use all that information in your advantage really it's there for a reason um the cars have been there a lot in in the past right yeah, exactly. you get in there exactly. after our lap i asked charles what process did he go through to prepare for a new track? And he talks talks me through his preparation and how he practices to prepare for a, for a race on a new track. So if it's a track that I, I, I don't know, I, I will tend to look at some, look at re resources online, whether it be YouTube, VRS, do a driving school, whatever. Um, I will then get on track in a practice session on my own and actually drive it slowly and take into account some of the information we've been talking about in terms of the turns. Yeah. You know, what turn leads on to what other turn and, you know, looking at the optimal lines. Um, I will probably do about four or five, maybe more. Um, laps of um, relatively slow speed before I start then picking up and what I tend to do I don't kind of do four or five laps and then try and get a hot lap in I you know I, I gradually because you know on each lap you're only going to see that corner once yeah so if exactly. you mess it up <laughs> you've got to go around. so you know I just take my time get into a rhythm and then as I'm kind of practicing and trying to fit lines on then picking up the speed. So it takes it takes a while. It will just take a while for me to do it anyway. And how long do you practice by yourself? Do you practice a long time or do you join open practice? What will you I, I don't I, I I what I tell you to do is go into an open practice where it's got no one else in it. <laughs> okay. And then kind of just Go around on my own for a bit and eventually you start seeing people come in and my aim is to i don't do it for a new track i don't do that for new tracks it's very rare a new track comes up for me nowadays but um if this track i haven't been on for a long time i will certainly do that going to over practice early when there's nobody else in there okay do uh, a few laps and then when people start coming in then you I use it to, it to my I, yeah I use it to my advantage well not my advantage I, I use it you know as a as a guide you know can I keep within a certain time of these people or because sometimes they come in just before a race yeah um, so can I can I stay with these people can I um, drive close to them or can I drive in front of them and stay in front of them they you know and drive safely and all that kind of thing so yeah. While I was just driving around and chatting to Charles, he gave me some really good advice on how to reason and think about the track when we learn new tracks. Don't think about the upcoming corner, think about the following and maybe two corners after the one, because that'll help you to set up for them. Yeah, so when, when, you're, appro when you're approaching a, a corner, when you get to know the track really well, yeah. and you're approaching a corner, think about next corner before you even get there. Yeah. You know, so, you know, once you've gone around turn one, you know that you're going to have to be breaking at the 50 because there's a, a right-hander coming up. You know that you're going to have to do a late apex, go out to the left because 
you know, need to track over to the right to take the next turn. You know, you know, think about it before you actually get there. So there's no surprises if you have to do something um, untoward in the race, in a race, or even in practice, even. Yeah. You know. So. No, that's... Otherwise, you might as well be going around blind, if, if that makes sense. You know, you might as well be. It might as well be a brand new track, and you've never driven it before. Because um, if you're only looking at the corner that you're approaching, you're not setting yourself up for, you know, the subsequent corners. So that's the end of this video. Learn your track. We will be making more videos like setting up an overtake, uh, setting up your car. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Charles and Andy for helping me create these videos. It's very insightful and helpful, and I hope it helps you to improve your sim racing and your pace. Thanks for watching. And if you like these videos, please subscribe and share them with your friends. And uh, I hope to see you soon.